Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about the intermediate value theorem and how that applies to calculus. So let's get started. Um, we need to start by uh, beginning with a continuous function. We can't use the intermediate value theorem if the function that we're dealing with is not continuous. So first we need to show that it's continuous in order to do that. And uh, if a function is continuous, then three things have to be true. We need to show that those three things are true for all points at x equals a. So the first thing is, is that the limit as x approaches a of f of x has to exist. The second thing is that f of a has to exist. And the third thing is that that limit and that function value have to be equal to each other. If those three things are true, then the function is continuous and we can use the intermediate value theorem. So here's how we would do it. Um, what we can say is if a function is continuous, then if we start at a y value of f of a um, and we end at a y value of f of b, then um, we're going to pass through every y value between those two um, at some point between that a and that b, which are x-coordinates. Uh, so every y value is going to be uh, passed through uh, from the beginning y value to the ending y value. So for example, if I've got a continuous function f of x, um, and it's continuous from x equals 1 to x equals 5, and I know that the first y value is 10 and the last y value is 6, then somewhere between uh, x equals 1 and x equals 5, we're going to hit every possible y value between 10 and 6. All right, so graphically, if you want to look at it, let's start at that red dot where a and f of a is, and then end at that red dot where b and f of b is. You can join those two with any continuous function you want. Um, it can be pretty mild, it can be pretty crazy, uh, but you can guarantee that every y value on that y axis between f of a and f of b is going to be the y value for some x value. So if I pick a random y value f of c and I follow that to the graph, um, that dot is going to go down to some x between a and b. So a practical application of that, um, you've all driven in a car before, or you've ridden in a car before. So let's say that you start traveling at 20 miles per hour and you end at 35 miles per hour. Then um, you know that as you're going from 20 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour, you're hitting every speed in between. So uh, that makes sense because your speed is a continuous function. Um, if you're given, instead of like a practical example, let's say you're given a table and you're asked um, if these are the x values and y values on a continuous function, what is the least number of values k so that f of k equals 10? Well, what you have to do is you have to look at every subinterval that's in the table. So if I look at the first one between um, x equals 3 and x equals 5, the y values start at 6 and end at 9, which means that the y values are going to hit every y value in between. But since 10 isn't between 6 and 9, I'm not sure whether I'm going to hit a y value of 10 or not. I might, I might not, uh, but I can't say for sure that I will. If I look at the second subinterval between x equals 5 and x equals 8, then um, I've got the y values of 9 and 12, and 10 is between 9 and 12, so I know that somewhere between x equals 5 and x equals 8, I'm going to hit a y value of 10 at least once. Um, and that goes for the third interval as well, uh, going from x equals 8 to x equals 10. I'm starting at 12 as a y value, ending at 7. 10 is between there, so I'm bound to hit a y value of 10 at least once. And then in the last subinterval from x equals 10 to x equals 13, um, the y values only go from 7 to 8. 10 is not between those, so I don't know if I'm going to hit a y value of 10 between x equals 10 and x equals 13. But I do know that because of those two green brace brackets there, I am going to hit a value of 10 at least twice, maybe more, but at least twice. So there are at least two values of k where um, f of k is going to equal 10. So that is intermediate value theorem. Um, if you have any questions on that, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.